Hello and welcome. In this computer science IB course video, we'll get to talk about the selection sort, which is an algorithm that takes a list of numbers and sorting them. Now remember that an algorithm is a step-by-step -step procedure in order to accomplish a task. The idea behind the selection sort is that it takes our list and it divides it into two portions, an unsorted portion and a sorted portion. And then at each step of the algorithm, a number is moved from the unsorted portion into the sorted portion. And it keeps on doing that until eventually the whole list is sorted. Let's take this list of numbers as an example. We have a list of six numbers, 21, 28, 3, 15, 7, and 14. And the way that the, the, uh, the algorithm works is that, again, we need to divide them into two set of portions. And since this is the first step, so this all of it is considered as an unsorted portion. And in each step, we need to find the minimum number, and we need to put that number in the sorted portion, which it doesn't really exist at the first step. So we have to take the first number, the first element, and the first element is 21. So we consider now that 21 is the current minimum, and we need to visit the rest of the list to figure out which number is the minimum number. So we move to, to this element, is, and we ask, is 28 less than 21? The answer is no. So we move to the following number. Is 3 less than 21? The answer is yes. So now we remember this position as that 3 is the current minimum. And then we continue. We say, is 15 less than 3? The answer is no. So we continue to the following element. Is 7 less than 3? No. And then we move to the next element. Is 14 less than 3? The answer is no. And then since we reach the end of the array or the list, so now we know that 3 is the smallest number in those elements. So what we need to do is that we need to swap the first element with the current minimum, which is 3. And now our list is divided into two portions, a list of sorted numbers, which is in this case only number 3, because now we know that 3 is the smallest number and 3 is in its correct location. And now we need to examine the unsorted portion. And the way that we do that is technically we do the same thing. So we go and see the first number. Now we remember that 28 is the minimum number in this pass. So we look at the next number. Is 21 less than 28? The answer is yes. So now we remember that our current minimum is 21. And then we move to the next number, 15. Is 15 less than 21? The answer is yes. So now our current minimum is 15. And then we move to the next number. Is 7 less than 15? The answer is yes. So now 7 is our minimum number. And then we move to the next num element. Is 14 less than 7? No. So since we finished the list, our current minimum is 7. So we need to swap 28 with 7. And now our sorted portion is 3 and 7. And the unsorted portion is 21, 15, 28, and 14. So we continue to do the same thing. Now our minimum number is the first element in the unsorted portion, which is 21. And now we continue and compare. Is 15 less than 21? The answer is yes. So now our current minimum is 15. And then we compare, is 28 less than 15? No. Is 14 less than 15? The answer is yes. So now we swap 14 with 21. <laughs> OK. So now we have the sorted portion, which is 3, 7, and 14, and the unsorted portion. 15, 28, and 21. Now we know, we as humans, by looking at this, that 15 is in its correct location. 
But then again, our algorithm doesn't know. So we need to do the same steps. So we take the first number in the unsorted portion, 15, and we say that this is the minimum number. So we compare it with the next number. Is 28 less than 15? No. So we compare it with the next element. Is 21 less than 15? No. So now, since 15 is in its correct location, there's no need to swap it. And now we have this as the unsorted portion. So again, we take the current minimum as 28, and then we compare it. Is 28 less than 21? The answer is no. And since there are no more elements left, then we need to move, we need to swap 21 with 28. And since 28 is the last number, then there's no need uh, to, um, uh, to continue. So now we have a sorted uh, list. It's 3, 7, 14, 15, 21, and 28. Now let's formalize our algorithm with some pseudocode. On line 2, we can see that we need to iterate over every element in the list, except the last element, because it's already in its correct place. On line 4, we consider the first element in the unsorted portion of the list to be the minimum, as we did in our example when we talked about number 23. So we have something to compare to. Now, if we refer back to the example that we used, we have to stress the fact that according to the approved notation for developing pseudocode from the IB, we always need to start our array with index 0. So technically here, this is index 0, this is 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Now remember that the basic idea of our algorithm here is to divide the list into two portions. Now at any given moment when we first when we talked about the fact that we take the first element we start with this as the current minimum uh, the number 21 for example here. So at any given moment when i is any index here j which is the first index of the unsorted portion would be actually i plus 1. So we need to make sure that when we reach the end of the array over here, we don't really exceed the limit, because then this will pose a problem. So we, in other words, we have to stop at i equals 4. That's why we put on line number 2, we set the limit to size minus 2, because first of all, since the base is 0, then the size would always be, the maximum is size minus 1, you know, because this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And because of the fact that we have to stop at the, the element before the last, then we also subtract another 1. Now, in line number 5 begins the second loop, in which we iterate over each unsorted element. We know that after i iterations, the sorted portion of our list must have i elements in it, since each step sorts one element. So the first unsorted element must be in its position, i plus 1. On line number 7, we compare the current element with, to the minimum element, element that we've seen so far. If the current element is smaller than the minimum element, then we remember the current as the new minimum. On line 8. Finally, on line 10 and 11, and 11, we swap the minimum element with the first unsorted element, thereby adding it to the sorted portion of the list.